you. Um, congratulations on the film. I want to talk a little bit about it. Can you give us, I mean, it's only three minutes long, right? So it's I hard know, not to yeah. give too much away here. But can you can you tell us what it's about? Yeah, it's about um, two friends who uh, were friends in high school, kind of go their separate ways. Um, and they uh, see each other um, at a uh, kind of a convenience store robbery. Um, usually you kind of see a friend at, uh, outside or at a restaurant or whatever, and it's kind of awkward. But, um, to me, this is kind of the most awkward, um, way you could see an old friend. Yeah. If you're, if you're behind a, uh, if you're behind the counter and they come in to rob you, what, was there anything exactly. that inspired this film? Um, yeah. So, um, I, I've been wanting to be a, a, a filmmaker for, uh, like ever since I was really little, uh, like I love being on set. It's like my favorite, th- one of my favorite things in the world. Um, and uh, and I've always been interested in storytelling. And when I was actually shooting Ghostbusters Afterlife, I worked with Jason Reitman, who's a fantastic writer director. He did you know Juno up in the air, um, and you know we would kind of talk about the some things that uh, or, you know uh, I would tell him that I'd want to uh, be a director or writer. And so he just told me to write a short. And so I came in and I kind of had this short idea that. I went up to him and it was really kind of long and uh, ridiculous. It's like a guy, I was like a guy who wakes up in a silent film. And he's like, okay, so first you have a medium that's dead. You have something that is like, you want to film it on equipment that's really hard to get, incredibly expensive. Um, Like, why don't you just make a film that's short, like literally five pages long, just with two people talking? Um, You could do that. And then I kind of realized that, oh, I can do that. And then I, I was kind of figuring it out for a while. And then I ended up meeting the two actors on the set of Ghostbusters. They're also, they, they, the two actors in night shifts also play, uh, play, uh, supporting roles in that movie as well. And when I met them, I thought that they had, um, funny chemistry in real life. One of them, um, who plays Billy is, uh, also in this, I'm doing this Jesse Eisenberg uh, directorial debut. He's also in this movie with me and is, is also a writing partner. So we're, um, the goal is to be like a, the dumb versions of Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Um, but, uh, but yeah, anyways, I, I kind of did this, um, did this thing and I, and I got them to come to Vancouver for a day. Uh, yeah. For, to film for a night and it was great. Um, yeah, it was super rewarding and, uh, and fun. Why, like why friends, Running into another. Why does it? Why is? Why does that on your mind? Uh, I. It's weird because I, I, you know, I have a lot. I grew up in Vancouver, um, and I still live there. Uh, whenever I'm not working, and sometimes I'll see people from elementary school that, um, and, but we're completely different people now, obviously, and but that happens a lot. Um, like way more often than I would like for it to happen. Um, and uh, so I'm always constantly fighting. Um. Like, do I lie to this person about what I'm like actually like doing? Um, because it sounds like super douchey. And um, what do you, you know, mean? Like, like if, I, I, if I say, "Hey, I'm in Jesse Eisenberg's new movie," you're like, "Oh God, I don't want to." Well, I just think like yeah. if you're talking to someone who like has a like a you know who's working or whatever, or is like a butcher, or works or whatever, or works like uh, in a mechanic shop, and you're like, "Yeah, they've been working really hard," and I'm like, "Yeah, well, I was just like." in LA doing meetings and stuff like, I don't know. It's just, it's a very kind of different thing. And and I went to, you know, elementary school with them. So it's like a very weird thing. And so I just, it, that kind of inspired me to write something like, uh, like, like that kind of, um, but two people who are kind of on different pages. Um, and, uh, the thought of a, uh, I, I got this thing, like there's a part in it where the guy, the guy is like a working actor and, he thinks that he's in a play, but it, he was just uh, working in an escape room as like a human prop, essentially. And that came from one of the actors yeah. because he's a working actor. The guy, Artoon, is a working actor. And he told us a story early on about how he um, he had to play like a uh, like a uh, what's the word, like a butler in like a haunted mansion um, escape room. And I thought that was the funniest thing. So yeah. I put it in. I want to play a clip from the film. So this is uh, from your short film, Night Shift. After the two friends end up recognize, recognizing each other, they end up sitting on the floor from one another having a chat. Take a listen to this. Dude, can you believe it's been four years since you graduated? It's been a minute, huh? Yeah. You still driving that sick-ass BMW? Oh, man, I think it was a beast. I'm actually riding a bike these days. I sold it to Elijah to pay rent. Yeah, what's Elijah up to? I don't know. I think last time we... 
Wait, I'm sorry, you can't rob this place on a bike? Yeah, man, I'm trying to be more environmentally conscious. Just trying to do my part. That's a clip from Night Shifts, the uh, debut, directorial debut from Finn Wolfhard, my guest. You were just telling me that when you run into friends from elementary school and you guys have obviously taken very different paths, they might be working in a car shop, they might be teaching somewhere, and you've been taking meetings and and acting in, in big movies and TV shows and stuff like that. These guys in the film, you know, haven't seen each other since high school. But all the Stranger Things stuff happened to you when you were pretty young. Like, did you get to have a high school? I did, yeah. I, I So, uh, I got to, I was so lucky I got to go to high school and kind of have uh, a, a high school, as much of a high school experience as I could have. Um, I went to this uh, Catholic uh, high school in Vancouver, and whenever I... Um, you know, with the uniform and everything. And whenever I wasn't in, um, whenever I wasn't working, I would come back and, uh, and go back to school. Um, what's that like? Uh, crazy. I, I had kind of the same, what's great is I had the same kind of set friends from, from high school when I was in, I started doing stranger things when I was in grade eight and, uh, I started, I did six months of grade eight and then I, um, left and did six months um, in Atlanta shooting Stranger Things, and I came back for grade nine, and the show was out. And um, and it was very different. Um, yeah, you were but, famous. Like, you became famous. I know. I Well, that was the thing, is that I was. it was like, yeah, I, I went to school kind of with the same kind of core group of friends, like these five people or four people, and then I came back, and thank God I still had those same people. I, didn't, I really didn't, like, make friends with anyone else throughout that time. I just had those same people. But I definitely was weird. Like, I was treated different, and I came back, and, like, the kids that I had never spoken to were coming up to me and um, uh, asking me for pictures and stuff like that. And it was, uh, it was crazy. I would say, like, they got used to it pretty early on. I had an amazing school. But the funniest part, I think, was going back for grade 12 um, and uh, – and the grade eights didn't know that I went to the school. Usually what happens is like the, the vice principal kind of gives like a little, just like a little, I don't know, just says that some people go here, lets them know that I went there and I, they didn't know. And so people kind of freaked out when they found out that I was there and it was pretty funny. Freaked out how? What do you mean? Well, they were just, they had no, like they just, I walked, I mean, they, some people had watched the show, I guess, and I walked past them and they kind of just did a double take and like I was in their same uniform and like I, they, it, they were just totally uh, like kind of speechless and they were running up to each other like, is that, is, is that him? Like, is that the guy? Like, does he go to our school? Like they were so, uh, you know, and the, so they would run up and kind of like almost look like I was, if I was like a real or not, like a entity or a ghost or something like that. But you never um, felt like you were missing out on a... Typical. I mean, were you ever jealous of your friends who got to have maybe more yeah. than normal? Early on, early on, I was like grade nine, I was grade ten, I was, and then I kind of started to figure out that like um, I really, really liked what I was doing. There's a reason why I don't like being in a classroom. I loved my school and I loved uh, a lot of my teachers, but I, I was, I couldn't really be like from an early age like domesticated. I couldn't st- sit still and I couldn't really focus on things that didn't. Um, that didn't interest me. Uh, so like English, I was really, was my only class that I was good at and had an A in. Um, and that was the only thing that I paid attention to really. So, so I was like, Oh man, I wish, but then, you know, I'd hear friends party story, you know, house party stories or whatever. And I just kind of get like, I, I, first I'd get like a little, like, Oh man, I wish I was there. And then kind of, as I got older, I was like, I don't, I don't give a shit. (laughs) Like I was like, I, um, I, I, I'm so, I love my job too much to yeah. not do that. And, um, but like uh, now I'm at a position where I'm out of school and I can have a lot of life experience that isn't, um, that kind of thing. And I'm, I'm totally proud of it. And yeah, my, I can yeah. live vicariously. As a guy who went drinking a lot in the woods in high school, you didn't really, yeah. you didn't miss out on a whole yeah, lot. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was pretty good, but you know, I, 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 it's, not, it's okay. Uh, if you're just tuning in, my guest is Finn Wolfhard. He's an actor, screenwriter, and director. He's been speaking about his short film, Night Shifts, which is out now. It's about two friends who drift apart and reconnect under unusual circumstances. We were just talking about Stranger Things. Uh, you played Mike Wheeler, one of the kids on the show. This is another, I mean, get ready for your voice. This is from season three. Take a listen to this. I'm sorry. I just, like, I've never felt like this, you know, with anyone before. It sounds like my voice. Yeah, it's normal. 
<laughs> yeah, they do say it makes you crazy. What makes you crazy? You never, you ever heard that term? You know, like the phrase, like blank makes you crazy, like the word. Girlfriends? No, 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 not not girlfriends. Boyfriends. No, 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 not boyfriends either. It's like it's like a feeling, or yeah, like something. I, t- I tell you, that's my that's my guest uh, Finn Wolfhard on Stranger Things. You're 13 when that first came out, as you mentioned, you were in grade eight. In this clip, you're obviously older, and the voice isn't as squeaky as it used to be. Yeah, but yeah. it did make me think about like you had to act out sometimes the awkward coming of age moments that we get to have in private. You have to act them out in front of everyone. How's that? Uh, I'll tell you that it was—it's the easiest thing to do because <laughs> it's—I uh, can feel it uh, all the time. Um, so for me, awkward playing awkward is easy. Um, what do you mean? Well, I just think I'm—I—I—I I, uh, I think that when you're growing up, like yeah, you're—you're—you uh, are automatically awkward um and but but being in front of people and doing it in front of a camera i feel like um uh is for me easier because i can just uh i'm so used to it in real life uh you know it's like if you were a really good cook in real life and then you were acting and they were like we want you to make a grilled cheese you'd be like oh sweet i could really do that um (laughs) i feel like I, i i can do that pretty well with the awkward thing but um so yeah, I don't know. I I but I really enjoy uh, doing all that stuff. They do a great job at the '80s, you know, for someone who wasn't around in that decade at all. Yeah, they. I mean, they, I mean from, they really do. I I I grew up watching a lot of '80s films um, and doing kind of a compare just from me as a person that didn't grow up in the '80s, but comparing, you know, the set dressing and how it looks, you know, to like stuff like. Goonies and Lost Boys and all these movies. It's pretty, pretty spot on. I've been watching The Sopranos recently, which is set in the like early 2000s. And it's been making me sort of nostalgic for that time. Sometimes I watch a scene and Tony Soprano is just sitting down and waiting for something to happen and he doesn't have his phone to have in front of him. And I went like, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah. That sounds all yeah. right. You know I, I mean? abs- yeah, that's what makes the also the show so fun to film is because it's like the, yeah, they, we're not relying on like a lot of technology, um, and uh, yeah, I mean that was apparent. I mean, from my my parents and from looking at movies from that, like you could just really no one really cared. Like you could just get on your bike and go. Okay, I'm going for the day. You're not going to see me, or two days, uh, and you're not going to see me. Or some kids would go for the summer. Some kids would just go like. I'll see you when school starts, um, which is now like insane because you would have to check in with your parents every second. But or they'd have an app where they can know exactly where you right, are. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 They'd have to find my iPhone all the time. Um, but uh, I think that's what made the '80s so amazing. Um, was like just full freedom, complete freedom, and that's why it's also so fun to be on that show. Is because you really feel like you're having an adventure constantly. Um, as an actor and like as a character. Um, Is there anything from that, from that era that you wish you could bring back to our lives now? Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, 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 I do. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's something great. I, I, I grew up at like the tail end of blockbuster um, and like grew up with, I think blockbuster closed when I was probably nine. Um, and that was like heartbreaking for me because I would go every s- Friday after school and pick three movies. And it was like, it made movies a lot more important because I mean, you know, streaming is amazing. You have everything at your fingertips and like, it's awesome, but there's something about Blockbuster and about video stores that was just like so gratifying because you could go and, and really pick. And like, cause once you picked, you couldn't like, you're not just going to drive back like to go get it, like to go get another one. Like it's, it's, you know, all or nothing. So, uh, yeah, picking those movies were great, and uh, I mean, it was huge in in the eighties. I mean, that was that was it. Tapes, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember that from CDs. That like I would spend, I would save up and spend twenty five bucks on a CD, and I was unable to not like it because I bought it. So I would yeah, have to listen same, to it. You know what I mean? It was the same thing with me. I I like I I think we only got like a DVD player 
in 2007 when I was about five or six. So like the first six years of my life were, were VHS tapes. So, uh, in, in VCR and, and, uh, CDs. And I, I think that it's funny. I remember the last CD I, I actually, I bought a, actually I bought a CD a few years ago, but I remember the last CD I bought like before I started using like a digital media was, um, a Coldplay album. Um, and it was at, uh, Barnes and Noble, uh, in Los Angeles. And I remember it was the one, the Milo Zylo or whatever it's called or the one. Yeah. Zylo too. But, Zyloto. That was the last one I ever bought where I remember buying it with my own, like, you know, five buck allowance or whatever. I can hear people in their cars listening to CBC radio screaming at us saying, it Yeah, wasn't what that, are you talking it wasn't about? That, it wasn't that long ago. Uh, yeah. Before I let you go, it's been nice to talk to you. Before I let you go, anything you can tell me about season four? Yes. Um, well, okay. So, uh, like, uh, no spoilers. Uh, but, uh, it is it's every kind of year like it's set kind of a year later and you see like what these characters kind of are up to um and uh like we've added some like pretty incredible new characters um there's a guy who is named eduardo franco who's an incredible like uh actor comedian who's kind of playing this stoner character that is like brilliant um and uh and there's like some amazing really i would say like every season it gets darker like i really i will say like season three i was like this is the darkest season that will ever be like exploding rats and everything but really like season four so far like it's the darkest season that's ever been not these are still it's also the every year it gets amped up every year it gets funnier and darker and sadder and everything so it's just been every year they amp it up so um I'm really excited for people to see it and we're still filming it. We've been filming it for, cause of COVID we had to put it on hold, but now we're, uh, now they're back. They're filming right now. I'm not filming specifically, but I go back in a few weeks, but, um, but, uh, I'm so excited for everyone to see it. It's, it's been kind of a long, a long go at it. Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you too, man. Thanks so much.